change here as fallout continues over that shocking report link on CBS on 60 Minutes linking a Russian intelligence agency to the mysterious Havana syndrome. As an attorney for one of the reported victims says, the U.S. government sought to bury the issue. They were all doing something relating to Russia. There is, in my view, without a doubt, evidence of a cover-up. What I've seen more so is we see lines of inquiry that would take us potentially to answers we don't want to have to deal with. Which would be an attack by Russia. So how should the government respond now? Former acting uh, attorney general Matt Whitaker joins us. Matt, I know you watched the 60 Minutes report like all of us. The State Department has pushed back on this. Your thoughts about Russia being behind these radio waves that Racked the brains of some of our most coveted uh, intelligence experts. Yeah, well, right now the intelligence community doesn't believe that this weapon exists or that these people have been affected by it. But obviously, these are real people that have real s symptoms and, and real problems with their, you know, their especially their heads, their hearing, their their frame of reference. Um, but you know, the 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 question is, does this exist as a weapon? And I think DOD believes it's more likely than the intelligence community does. But if it does, then what do you do? If they are attacking American citizens, what is the response? Because, you know, right now we are on a, a, a relationship with Russia where we kind of run out of sanctions we can apply. We don't have a lot of things left that we can do to hurt Russia uh, for, for attacking our American citizens if, the, if that's what ends up being happening here. Right. I want you to hear what the State Department said after that report came out. It has been the broad uh, uh, conclusion of the intelligence community since March 20, uh, 2023 that is unlikely a foreign adversary is responsible for these anomalous health incidents. It's something that the uh, intelligence community has investigated extensively and continues to look at. They say it happened not in Havana first. It happened in Germany. And as late as the last NATO summit, they're already starting to do that. And if a, if a enemy comes at you, uh, covertly and tries to take you out, I don't think it's in America's interest to do nothing. No, I com completely agree. The question is, what, what should be the response if you don't know for sure that it's happening and that Russia is behind it? I mean, I think that is um, why the intelligence community and why the State Department are taking this attitude of, of we're going to have to need more evidence. Uh, but at the same time, these people, there's a hundred or more people that have been injured right. uh, from similar... Um, alleged attacks and that's yeah. I think that's very concerning you know and, and when when does it get to a point where the government changes that assessment I, that's that's where right. we're at right now they seem to be all uh, everybody hit seems to be involved with Russia investigations and be uh, yeah. very higher up in that meanwhile let's change gears and talk about one of the Trump trials Jack Smith back in the news today pushing back on the judge in the documents case for entertaining Donald Trump's team for saying these were all of his documents these were his personal papers. He should be allowed to keep them. You should not be charging him. Jack Smith is outraged. He says he never told anybody they were his documents. Yeah, yeah but that, that kind of buries the lead. And what's, what they're trying to get at is this Presidential Records Act argument, which is ultimately the Clinton sock drawer case, right? I mean, Bill Clinton had personal recordings in his sock drawer. A court determined that they were his personal records. It didn't matter if they were classified. It didn't matter anything because Bill Clinton had determined after his presidency they were his personal records. Donald Trump has done the same thing. He said, these documents are my personal records. If you read the Presidential Records Act, Brian, it says all documents. It doesn't carve out defense intelligence information. It doesn't carve out classified marked information. It says all records are presidential and that it has a process. And that's what Judge Cannon is trying to get, get to the bottom of. And that's what Jack Smith, uh, to your point, is really objecting to. And what he said, Jack Smith, is not a single one, not a single person had heard Trump say the, that he was designating records as personal or at the time he caused the transfer of boxes to Mar-a-Lago. He believed that his removal of records amounted to designating them as personal under the PRA, President Records, records Act. Does it matter who he told? Does it matter? Would it help the president's, uh, former president's argument if he told Cash Patel yeah. or told Mark Meadows or told Stephen Miller? Yeah, there's been several people that have publicly said that he was that they that they did know that he had determined certain things as as personal. But you know that is uh, when you get behind a grand jury and you testify, you know, under oath and and, and under penalty right. of perjury. You know, I I don't know what they said in front of that grand jury. What I do know is that. Um, 
what he did at the time is not necessarily the most important thing under the Presidential Records Act. It was, you know, while he was president, obviously he could have declassified things, but that's only one level of inquiry. And I think Jack Smith is trying to conflate all of right. those issues together. Desperate to go to trial, one way or another. <laughs> exactly. uh, it's unbelievable. I thought people should just go for justice, not speed. Matt Whitaker, thanks so much. Yeah, I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.